My name is Brianne Whiteknife. I'm a student at the University of Alberta, and I am in the Community Service Learning Program as part of an environmental sociology course. I have been working with the Regional Environmental Action Committee on gathering information for their plastics remanufacture project. I will be interviewing the Executive Director of the Alberta Plastics Recycling Association, Tammy Schwass. Can you tell us about how the Alberta Plastics Association got started and why? Yeah, so it's uh, the Alberta Plastics Recycling Association is the full name is APRA and uh, this is our 2021 is actually our 30th year of operation. And so we got started by some of the resin manufacturers in the province and we still have two of those founding members, Dow, as well as Nova Chemicals that are still part of our membership and part of our board of directors today. And they, they basically started the association as a way to help provide stewardship opportunities for plastics and uh, really help divert plastics from landfill and help facilitate recycling opportunities. So through the 30 years of the association, we've gained a number of members in the sector who are resin producers, manufacturers in the plastic sector, as well as recyclers. And those folks are key to uh, helping capture and recycle all sorts of plastics. When did you as a professional realize that we need to transform the way we manage plastics? So I've been with the association for 10 years, first as a communications uh, support and consultant and then uh, moved into the executive director role about five years ago and so uh, for sure coming into the association as I guess more of a, a lay person or uh, more of just a, a member of the public as opposed to the knowledge I have now from within the industry I would say that uh, yeah it became apparent very early in my involvement with the association sort of the the necessary work that uh, we do and that all pieces and parts of the value chain and parts of the plastic sector, the, the key role that all of those groups play in coming up with solutions. And so, um, yeah, it's just really important and really critical that we have individuals at the table from all of those different organizations to help us find better solutions, be better at, at reducing the waste in the, in the first place, uh, have um, a full circle or start to develop that demand for recycled content so that we can, can move items through the system more quickly and, and those types of things. So um, yeah, I guess it's been, been on my radar for about a decade now, but certainly we've seen a really high level of interest from uh, governments, both as we know, both federally and internationally, as well as, as locally and local groups within the last couple of years, I would say it's really increased in terms of things like key issues like microplastics and um, plastics in the oceans and the environment and our waterways. And so it's becoming, I guess, more of a pop culture kind of concern and topic and getting more into the public sphere just in the last few years. Although, like I said, associations like ours and on our partner associations that we work with have been dealing with and, and solving these problems for quite a few years now, quite a few decades even. Yeah, I watched your uh, Under the Microscope for the University of Calgary. I didn't know that so much of the plastic doesn't actually get processed because it's so small. That was a colleague that presented on that. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't done a ton of work around the microplastic side. With APRA, we deal more with the, the larger materials and sort of uh, managing those plastics. But yeah, you're right. It's uh, starting to become an increased awareness that, Plastics are uh, fibers from our clothes and uh, microbeads and things used in cosmetics that have that have been banned for the last few years. But still, it's uh, things that we sort of take for granted that uh, we don't realize when we when we wash things down the drain that there's consequences and there's plastics that we're potentially polluting into the environment. How does the APRA process recycled plastic that is numbered? Yeah, so um, we don't actually do any of that processing ourselves. As an association, we actually uh, run programs and we help facilitate the recycling with our membership. So they're the ones that do all the legwork and all the collection and recycling. We have sort of a variety of 
collectors and processors in the province. As you mentioned, typically dealing with one to sevens because those are sort of what we identify as plastics that we have markets for. There's certainly thousands of other types of plastics and combinations of chemical makeup of those plastics that we do often come across. But uh, yeah, one to seven is kind of our primary focus in terms of uh, markets and collection. And so we have everything from processors that just do collection and baling and then they ship that baled like like in your background shot there they ship that those baled plastics to um to end markets to be further processed we have members that um will collect and then wash shred and and pelletize that plastic back into a resin recycled resin form and uh sort of everything in between some of them that just get it to the shredded form it really all comes back to what are their markets and how do their end markets want to receive that plastic. But we do have quite a few innovative companies. Uh, we also have a member called Full Circle Plastics that's actually manufacturing plastic lumber and fence posts and all sorts of items out of that plastic uh, that, that they collect. So they're, that's really, I mean, as in the name Full Circle, they're starting to get back into the remanufacturing of those items and then the resale uh, back into the local Alberta marketplace. So you can go to various stores or contact Full Circle and purchase planter boxes or purchase lumber to build decking or all sorts of things. And that's plastic that's from Alberta, uh, from post-industrial and post-residential sources that is manufactured back into items here right in the province. And that's only high value plastics, right? So actually Full Circle is able to take quite a variety of materials. They're actually able to take some of the lower value plastics. Some of their plastics include used oil containers that have like an oil residue with them. And they can process that because of how they're extruding their boards and how they're manufacturing their items. It just melts down into the, into the lumber. And so they're able to handle some of that contamination. But yeah, I mean, we typically only see solutions for sort of the materials that are higher value in the market. You know, if people are going to have to pay or there's going to be a cost to recycle, uh, that does hinder some of the efforts that are of, of what's actually recycled. So it's like any other commodity, the prices are up and down and that does impact what we're able to accept and process because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a business for these companies to be able to, uh, to collect and process this plastic and they have to make money off of it. As the executive director of the APRA, what is the most important public message about plastic? It's a good question because there's so many of them. I think the biggest thing, if it was directed right at the public, is about understanding the differences of plastic and really on taking the time to learn what's accepted in your municipality or your region for recycling and then participate accordingly. So we, we kind of call it uh, wish cycling when when materials are thrown into the recycle bin because we hope that they are recyclable. But that really mixes up the recycling systems, the machinery and the sorting process. So for example, anything smaller than the palm of your hand doesn't get captured in the, the sorting systems. Uh, things like film, plastic, so grocery bags and things like that, often uh, return to retail options are better for recycling that. Some communities like the city of Calgary, you can put bags in bags, so they don't want loose, loose film because it clogs up the machines again. So Really, the, uh, the message, I guess, for the public is that the public does have a role. You play an important role in the collection of that plastic recycling. But you need to pay attention and look into how you can ensure you're providing the right materials back into the system. Where do you recommend we start our research? Yeah, so uh, can you give me a little bit more information on that in terms of what specifically you're looking to research? The different plastics recyclable in Alberta, like it, it varies from municipality to municipality. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So just yeah. your own municipality. 
Yeah, so I always say if you watch that, uh, the microplastics, but for those that didn't that are listening to this or hearing this stuff, I always say there's a difference of what's recyclable versus what is recycled. And just because something has the plastic uh, recycling number on it doesn't mean there's a viable market or a viable local market for it. So yeah, I guess if you guys are looking to provide the public with more information or more resources, it's it, it is right now just municipally driven, although the province is starting to engage on what's called extended producer responsibility, where it would become a, a province-wide system. And, and in that case, ideally, if we follow what's happened in other provinces, you'd be able to recycle the same materials, whether you're in Calgary, whether you're at your cottage in the mountains or, or wherever you are, that there's a consistency across the system. So uh, that would definitely help create less confusion for people if they're trying to figure out what is collected for recycling in their region and, uh, and go from there. What can we expect from the APRA moving forward and what are some challenges in moving forward? A couple of our big focus areas in the last little while have been um, sort of the hard to recycle or plastics that maybe don't have a home. So one of the areas that we focused on is agricultural plastics. And we have partnered with a number of groups from across the province on a pilot project to recycle grain bags and twine. And we're about halfway through that three year pilot so we will be continuing to advocate for a permanent program uh, with the government and with other partners to work towards that and then continue to address and add other plastics to that list. We're also working on a data project in and around Alberta's industrial heartland just outside of Edmonton and Fort Saskatchewan. Uh, to gather data on plastics generation at industrial facilities and so that study we received funding from Environment Climate Change Canada as well as some local partners to uh, better understand what's there and how it's currently being managed so that we can look at extending and advancing solutions for some of that industrial sources of plastic. So that's coming up for us. We just launched it and uh, we'll be implementing that in the study and uh, conducting the study, I guess I should say, with the final report by the end of the year. Some of the challenges, so we're also part of a provincial group um, looking to advance a circular economy for plastics. So again, that idea that we need to sort of start with the end in mind, look at how we design plastics in the first place, and then ensure that we have markets and places for those materials to go to be processed and to be remanufactured into new items. So that's, uh, you know, for sure, I guess one of the most exciting opportunities, but it will be also be a challenge because if you think of all the different players around the table and how things have been done in the last, uh, well, forever, right? You're changing an entire system. So there will definitely be challenges in how that's done, but it's also something that we have a lot of expertise in the academic world in Alberta and the petrochemical sector in Alberta. And so, you know, it, it is a really exciting time to be working in the field in the province because of all the professionals and players that are at the table. That's all the questions that I have. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about specifically? Did I give you uh, enough of what you were looking for in terms of all my, my answers? Or was there anything else that you had uh, specific questions about? I really like the notion of the circular economy. Yeah, yeah. If you want to look into that, there's uh, quite a few groups that are doing some really good work on that within uh, sort of started in Europe. But the Ellen MacArthur Foundation has a lot of information on that. And they're working on, uh, I'm going to get the acronym or the name wrong, essentially a circular plastics task force, I believe, is what they're, they're calling it. There's groups across the country in uh, other provinces that are starting up. Canada Plastics Pact is a group that has come together to address um, plastics. So looking at how to advance recycled content in plastics, reduce unnecessary plastics and, and advance certain policies to recycle or reuse all plastics. There's a lot of those interesting projects, even nationally that are happening as groups get involved and companies start uh, promoting and, uh, and working on solutions together. So yeah, if you're interested in sort of some of those ideas, those are some of the areas you can check out. Where in Canada do you think has the strongest sort of plastics processing that's environmentally friendly? 
we often look to British Columbia, as I referenced in that other presentation, BC has had extended producer responsibility for a few years now. And so they've really, because of that, they've been able to put in, uh, develop economies of scale and put in some really great infrastructure. So they have some really cool infrastructure like such as optical sorters. So I mentioned that there's thousands of types of plastics and you know, sometimes you can't even tell just from looking at it what type of plastic it is. Um, so they have these optical sorters that the technology enables them to shoot lasers onto the plastic and then air then shoots or separates the plastic into the, the source separated into the right container. So there's things like that where when you get producers involved and you get uh, some of that investment back into the system, you can purchase some of those technologies that are normally quite expensive or cost prohibitive, like to Alberta municipalities, they wouldn't likely be able to afford a system like that just on their own. So when you when you build a provincial system, you you have some of those efficiencies and you're able to really expand and grow your infrastructure. So BC is one and Ontario and Eastern Canada tends to have a pretty robust recycling program as well. Uh, primarily because they have the population. So they have they have just a lot more plastic and a lot more manufacturing than we do out west. Like I said, Alberta does have a really large and uh, successful petrochemical sector. So the manufacturing of the resins, but we don't have as much of a manufacturing sector in terms of manufacturing of plastic widgets and items and all those types of things as they do in Ontario. So there's that demand for that recycled content can be much greater in other parts of the country than, than what we see here. So we kind of have a few examples and, and even looking to Europe of how we can improve and really expand our, our systems to recycle more, collect more, recycle more, move that material through the system. We want to thank you for taking the time to watch this interview with Tammy Schwass. We certainly learned a lot and we appreciate your time and interest. We continue to film interviews with other knowledgeable people. So if you are interested in this project by the Regional Environmental Action Committee, we invite you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have links and resources down below where you can support us and learn more about our purpose. Thanks again for watching and take care.